Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to make one of my family favorites. It's the spicy barbecue bowl. What makes this dish so amazing is we don't have one sauce, we have two sauces. And that some of you might scares, you know, more work? Oh, but it's worth the flavor. So what we're doing here is building flavor. You know, good recipes build flavor from the bottom to the top. Um, in this case, we have two different sauces. We have this spicy barbecue sauce, and don't worry, if you're saying, uh, I don't really like spicy, you control the heat. The second is, the other sauce is a peanut sauce, which is just so yummy. The mix of the spicier one with, uh, it's a spicy tomato sauce, and this peanut sauce, they just go together so well. This is based on a Korean barbecue dish that I had, and I sort of wanted to replicate it. I haven't totally replicated it, but it turned out so well, you have the recipe now. Um, we're using some things that some of you might be familiar with or might not. Is either butler soy curls, tofu, tempeh, or a new favorite of ours is called soya wadi. Soya wadi comes in these little balls and is basically the same thing as soy curls. So if you've used soy curls, you use these the same way. I found these in a Indian market. Um, you can order them on Amazon. They, they are totally fine. Uh, some people say, well, it's not a whole food process. All the plant-based doctors say, um, you know, tempeh, tofu, things like this are okay. Um, we're not getting ultra-processed things like Beyond Meat that have a lot of fat. This, is, this and this is just made out of soybeans. Soybeans, that's it. There's nothing added to them. So they're good for you. And soy... Um, if you have any questions about soy, we can direct you to the right places. There is no issue with people with soy, so unless you have a soy allergy. So um, we're going to use the soy wadi today because that's what my family likes in this dish. And the first thing we have to do is rehydrate them because these come dried. So what's nice is they keep for a long time. You can just store them in your pantry and pull them when needed. And the texture of these things is like um, chicken or some sort of meat. So I'm putting in about three cups worth for my family, two and a half cups. And um, we're going to rehydrate them. And then we're going to start working on other things while they are rehydrating. So I just put enough water in so that they can soak. Okay. It takes about um, eight minutes for them to rehydrate, um, which is going to be more than enough time. I do that first thing. And don't worry if you go over eight minutes or over 15 minutes, it's not going to be a problem. You just drain out the excess water, squeeze them out a little bit, and you're fine. Okay. Um, now a couple things here. Um, we're going to make our sauce. Um, but before that, I'll, I'll say something about this recipe again. If you look at it, it can be a little intimidating. There's cooked rice, there's sautéed mushrooms, there's broccoli, um, sautéed broccoli. If you prep ahead or if you do some things ahead of time, this goes together in an instant. Um, just even just doing the sauce with the, um, the spicy sauce with the, the soy product, 10 minutes tops, 15 tops. So if you have some of these things done ahead of time, you can just heat them up or pull them out of your fridge, put them together, instant bowl, okay? So it, it's really not that difficult. Um, I made the peanut sauce up ahead of time. I put it in this nice little squeeze bottle. You can get these typically at the grocery store for about 98 cents, maybe a dollar. Um, they're handy to have around um, just for this 
uh, uh, um, kind of application. What is also great, just so you know, because I, I've never really talked about it, most things in our fridge, um, when we store them, last for about five days. That's sort of our benchmark. If we had it within five days, we figure it's good, unless something really funky went on in the fridge. Five days is good. Five days to seven, it depends. Something like this, this can keep for a long time. Sauteed vegetables, probably not. They start getting funky after five days. So that's sort of our time frame. When do you throw something out? You know, first we'll sort of do a smell test, then we might do a little taste test, and if things taste fine, we'll take it. You don't really have to worry. It's not like meat where you have to worry about um, certain spoiling as much, okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make this sauce, and I'll go through step by step. Um, I have a Vitamix, um, and this is one of the blending cups for a Vitamix mixer. You can use anything you like. Um, the sauce for me fills this up pretty well, okay? So um, this is what we're using. Okay, um, let me get my recipe. So this uses a half cup of tomato sauce. Um, unless you have tomato sauce in the fridge just open, um, we find it sort of wasteful. So we get these small cans of tomato sauce and we, we get can over jarred in a lot of cases because a lot of jarred has oil in it. Canned typically do not have oil in it. So if you look, you can read your thing. It's just tomatoes and some spices and herbs. So this is great. So we're using this. And if we don't want to save the half can, because this is about, this is eight ounces, so it's a cup, it's not a waste. Instead of opening a 16 ounce can and wasting it. So a half can of that. Normally we keep our ginger in the freezer because we always found that it would spoil, dry out, not be useful when we did need it. Um, we're, we have a tendency to use it a little bit more now. We still keep it in the fridge, in the freezer, and that keeps it nice and hard. We'll use a grater to grate off what we need. In this case, I needed a couple chunks. So I actually pulled out a one inch chunk, is what I needed, and um, in like five minutes, three minutes, sitting out on the counter, it thaws out real nice for you, but I'm gonna chop this in a few small pieces. A little uh, trick of the trade here that we figured out the other day. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had it, but a lot of times, especially if you're cutting a lot, your cutting board, your cutting board may move on the counter. You could put a wet cloth underneath. A chef showed us that at the uh, Wine and Culinary Center in Canandaigua, New York. Or I just happen to have a sill pad sheet that is a little smaller than my board. And that sill pad, sill pad sheet, which is made out of silicone, really helps keep it snug to the, the counter. So I don't have to worry about this moving. And it looks so nice. OK. So I have my ginger. I'm going to cut that. And since I'm blending it, I don't have to cut this in, in two bad pieces. but. Uh, too, too small a piece. I'm just going to add that. I need a quarter cup rice vinegar. So I have this great little measure that I got. It's uh, Joey, J-O-I-E, and we use this daily. Um, it has all different measurements on the outside. Um, it just becomes such a useful tool. Um, it's worth the price. When I bought it, it was only a couple dollars. They've since said, oh, this is a good deal and they've marked it up like double, triple, and it's like, that is a shame. The other day I put this into Chronometer, which is an app online where you can um, show all the ingredients and the vitamins and minerals. And I found that this recipe, even using low sodium soy sauce, was a, a little bit high in the sodium category. So I tried a couple different things. I put tamari in, tamari was a little better. I put in um, coconut aminos, and that was much lower. So if salt is an issue for you, I'd recommend using coconut aminos in this. 
Um, if you um, have a membership to Costco, Costco has these huge bottles of coconut aminos, um, good price, um, bigger than other places. So today we're going to use coconut aminos. Now, there is a little sweetness in this, uh, typically maple syrup and molasses or coconut sugar. Um, today, because I switched out the soy sauce, I decided I was going to use maple syrup and the molasses today. Molasses gives a nice, deep, rich color and deep, rich tone, but also a, a little bit more flavorful because of the molasses than the, the um, than the coconut sugar. I do like using coconut sugar. It's processed from the coconut palm. Uh, it has almost a butterscotch or, or uh, a lighter brown sugar flavor, so I have used that in some baking recipes. Um, today, like I said, though, I'm going to use molasses and maple syrup. So I'm going to need a quarter cup molasses and a quarter cup maple syrup. Now, a strange in ingredient you might say is this. It's not an apple. It's an Asian pear, which is a nice crisp pear. If you can't find an Asian pear, you can use a small apple, a small crisp apple, something that doesn't, isn't too sweet, um, but just has a, some crispness. So this is adding fiber to our sauce, which is great, um, but it also adds a unique and authentic flavor to some Korean barbecue recipes that I have seen out on the internet. So I put this in, skin and all. Because we're just, we, we want the flavor and the fiber. So put that in. And with this, I will sort of chop them into smaller bits just so it's easier for my blender to blend it instead of hunting for these things. What controls the heat in this one is called gochujang paste, okay? I use mother-in-law's gochujang fermented chili paste, concentrate. You could use uh, a, any kind of chili sauce you may have. I like this one. It's got a mild heat, but gives a nice sort of tanginess to the dish without overpowering the dish. Um, I say two to, to one tablespoon. I'm using a whole tablespoon in this. Um, I, and I really just love the flavor of this. Um, and this has been my go-to sauce as of late, this, this, this blend here. Three to four cloves of garlic, chopped. We need a tablespoon of sesame seeds. And one tablespoon of cornstarch. As you can see, this fills right up to the top. This, this whole thing will be our sauce for the soy wadi. So um, I'm going to blend this now, and we'll be all ready to prepare our dish. So as I was saying, our sauce, uh, I just blended our sauce. Our sauce is done. Um, I have rice that we cooked the other day that's in the fridge for dinner. I sauteed up some broccoli earlier. I have the peanut sauce already, and I have a few of my toppings already. So literally you'll see how quick this goes together after you've made the sauce and you just cook the wadi. Now the wadi are all hydrated. You can Squeeze them to see if they are. They should be sort of sp soft and spongy-like. Sh there shouldn't be any hard pieces in it. And this would be the same thing for the soy curls. You just want to make sure they're hydrated enough. Now with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain these off, and then we can start cooking. So what I have here is our wok. We've been using our wok a lot lately because... It's a nice big wok. This is, a, I think, a 14-inch wok, and it can hold a lot of veggies. So especially in veggie dishes or this, because of the sloping side, it's easy to just turn things over. And I'm heating it up right now, and then I'm going to put in the soy wadi.
in the sauce. Pour in the sauce. And we're going to let this um, cook until it boils and everything is heated through. So right now it's sort of liquid. I, I coat all the wadi so they're all getting that flavor. This is also a dish if you wanted to prepare this ahead of time you could take this and you just reheat it like you would um, meatballs and tomato sauce. So it really isn't a, a thing that should stop you from making it. Um, the, uh, this is really delicious and nutritious for us with all the different flavors and all the fresh vegetables. So I'll let that sit there a second while they heat through. A couple other things about this recipe. All the ingredients that you put along with the rice and the wadi can be your choice. Um, we're using bean sprouts. We don't get the bean sprouts too often, so that's why we've added it to the dish. We like broccoli. There's always broccoli in our house. You could use any other uh, leafy green. You could put in Brussels sprouts. Um, we're using steamed broccoli today. And um, red pepper, fresh red pepper, not sauteed or anything. You could use green pepper if you don't like that. You yellow pepper, orange pepper, it doesn't matter. Um, and we put some uh, scallions in too. You could use red onion, you could use white onion, um, whatever you like. Um, part of our family loves mushrooms and if you know uh, Sherry and I love our mushrooms and we get them in any way we can. So what's also nice about this dish, you can have a whole setting of ingredients out for your, your guests and they can put, choose what they want at the table. So that's how we're working today. Some people take mushrooms, some people take the peppers. Um, I like using the fresh pepper so you're getting raw vegetables along with some cooked vegetables. So it's all good. You get vitamins and nutrition from both raw and fresh, I mean raw and cooked. So um, however you can get them in, that, that's the bottom line. So you can see here it's starting to boil. The color's changing a little bit. It'll get a little darker. I like to cook these till they're, I mean, th that sauce is nice and thick right now. It's, it's thicker. You, if you wanted it thicker, you could. I'm going to let it cook a little longer and cook off some of the moisture. And at this point, or even before, you could taste the sauce and you could say, hmm. I like it or you know I really would like some more heat um, and you can decide that or you can leave it for people to decide you can put a bottle of, uh, of uh, sriracha at the table and people can spice it up to their own designs we like things to be spicy but not so hot that we need a, gal a gallon of water to clear it out so this is basically it it, it took no time at all it, it is all heated through and now we can assemble our bowl. I have a cup of uh, pre-cooked brown rice that I warmed up um, in the microwave and now I'm going to add our toppings. So I like to sort of make my bowl pretty. I want to make sure that I have enough of the sauce in there. So I have the sauce and now I can add some vegetables. I'm adding my peppers. I'm adding adding some mushrooms. Some bean sprouts. Some scallions, some fresh chopped peanuts. You could add some sesame seeds too if you wanted, but the last thing for me is the peanut sauce.
So that's how you make the spicy barbecue bowl. Like I said, it's our family favorite. I hope you like it too and enjoy. If you have any questions on any of this, you can always email me at dkschmidt at eplantslove.com or you can do it through the newsletters. Um, so um, don't hesitate to ask me anything about anything we share. All right. As they say, bon appetit. Enjoy. I almost forgot the broccoli. I just put the broccoli in and now my bowl is complete. So enjoy. I hope you're enjoying camp. Sherry and I are. Um, reach out anytime you like to give us a... Hi, you there. <laughs>